metabolism and you collect iron in your tissues and you can get cardiomyopathy, it, it destroys the heart muscle, you can get cirrhosis of the liver. I therefore carry the recessive gene for hemochromatosis. He could have knocked me over with a feather and so does my ex-husband. Isn't that fascinating? It's called a Mendelian recessive. And normally Mendelian recessives take about 20 generations for the two of them to get together to express the disease like diabetes or cystic fibrosis or hemochromatosis. There are the dominant ones like the, dwar the uh, achondroplastic dwarfs you see who have normal trunks and very short arms and legs and big heads. That's a dominant. And at Children's Hospital in Boston, I once saw a family, mother was normal, father was an achondroplast. They had five children following in their wake, four of whom were achondroplastic dwarfs. So it's a toss of the coin each time, Russian roulette. Okay, so uh, as we fill up the environment with radiation, so we're going to increase, well, we're damaging the very building blocks of life. And most people don't understand that. And they are passed on generation to generation to generation. That's the thing. Once you do produce a mutation, if you reproduce, it will probably be, I mean, two of my children are carriers. My daughter won't get herself tested, and she's a doctor. <laughs> she's a bit difficult. <laughs> As daughters are want to be. Now, so I, I didn't finish the xenon, krypton, and argon. These are... Xenon, krypton, and argon, they're called noble gases, they're gas, because they don't combine biochemically in the body. However, if you inhale them into your lung, they are absorbed through the alveoli, and they're very fat-soluble. And where are the main fatty tissues of the body? The abdominal fat pad and the upper thighs. And what is located in that area? The gonads, the testicles and ovaries. And they're very high energy gamma emitters like x-rays. So people who live near nuclear reactors, if there's an inversion system, and these things are emitted all the time, they, they could be enveloped in a cloud of xenon or krypton or argon, inhale it and damage their genes. Okay? And also their regulatory genes later to cause cancer. What you also should know is children are 10 to 20 times more radiosensitive than adults. But little girls are twice as sensitive than little boys to getting cancer. And that we didn't, we do, I mean, we haven't talked about that much, but the, we don't know why. We don't know why. Now, what else comes out routinely? Tritium. Tritium is H3 instead of H2. And it's, it's used in exit signs. It's used on watch dials. Um, it's used on airport signs for the planes to see. It is, it is a tiny, very active molecule. It gets out of every single container except gold, because gold is so dense. It'll escape from stainless steel, glass, plastic, you name it. So you can't contain tritium. And the nuclear industry says, oh, it's only radioactive hydrogen. Well, it combines with oxygen to form tritiated water. And you know there are a lot, often fogs around nuclear power plants and full of tritiated water. And this tritium actually can get right through the skin. Now, the skin lets nothing through because it's the most important organ of the body. That's why when you get a burn, you get so sick because you lose the protective mechanism. It also is inhaled into the lung and also bioconcentrates in the food chain and you can't taste it. And it's nasty stuff because it combines in the DNA molecule. It's highly mutagenic. It's a soft beta emitter. And I write all about it in this book. And there's a huge literature written by the nuclear power industry because they're scared, scared of tritium, but they say, don't worry, it's really okay. It's only tritium. Um, it causes brain tumors, muscular tumors. Well, it causes cancers in many organs. Okay, that's tritium. Carbon-14 routinely released. And its half-life is long. I can't remember, thousands of years. The half-life of this one is 12.2 years. That means if you start with a pound of tritium in 12.2 years, you have half a pound. In other 12.2 years, you have a quarter of a pound. It decays exponentially. Do you see? Multiply that by 10 or 20 to get its total radiological life. Each reactor releases a million picocuries of tritium a day. 
a, me a million pico curies of tritium a day from its cooling pools and from the reactor. Now, that's very interesting because Germany, and you know how studious and didactic the Germans are, study children under the age of five who live within five kilometers of the reactor. Five kilometers, what is it, two and a half miles? Um, it's 16 old reactors, and they found that the children under the age of have double the incidence of leukemia and a high incidence of cancer. That's because of the tritium. And that's also because of the argon, xenon, krypton, and carbon-14, and other releases they sometimes, you know, just routinely release. The study was reproduced in France, and they found the same thing. Now, it's never been done here. Why? Because if you do it, then you've got to do something about it, like maybe close the reactors down, and the parents are going to rise up and get really upset. So if you don't want to do anything, don't do the study. Your industry is really evil. And I use that word advisedly and carefully, not just off the top of my head, because killing people is evil. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Thou shalt not kill? Okay, so now I want to go on to the other elements. I can't go through all of them, but I will give you an example of some that got out at Fukushima, and then I'll go on to Chernobyl. I-131, what's the, you all know, where does iodine goes in the body, where? thyroid, yeah, and in particularly in little children, they suck it up like a sponge. It's a, a beta, that a, a electron, and a, and a high energy gamma. It's got a half-life of eight days, so it's around for about ten weeks. Um, it, when it lands on the soil, the grass sucks it up and bioconcentrates it by orders of magnitude. The cattle then eat the grass. I can't draw a cow, but the active organ is this one. And <laughs> It concentrates most highly in the milk, and then a pregnant woman may be drinking the milk. So as the radioactive iodine passes through the breast tissue, it can, buy, it can mutate a cell to cause cancer later. Huh? And then the baby, that gorgeous little tiny baby, so sensitive to radiation, drinks the radioactive breast milk. And so what happens is that the, there's biomagnification of all these isotopes up the food chain. And the scary thing is you can't taste, smell, or see radiation in your food or in the fish you might be catching here that are swimming over from Fukushima where they tip more radiation into the sea than anyone's ever, ever seen before. Beware. I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, what they're doing, you also need to know is that there was a town in Japan called Ikate which got a high amount of fallout. They looked at over 3,000 children in Itate, little ones, and 30% have thyroid nodules. Now, that's really early. It's within a year. You don't expect solid cancers to start appearing for 15 years uh, and leukemia for five years. This is within a year. And you know what the Japanese government is doing? They're following them. Okay, hands up those who know that that's a stupid thing to do follow them. Yeah. Well, what you have to do is you have to either remove the nodule or do a fine needle biopsy to see what the histology is. And if indeed it's malignant, then you do a total thyroidectomy. And then the child still might die from metastases from the thyroid tumour, um, and the child then has to have thyroid replacement, T thyroxine, for the rest of their life, like a diabetic with insulin, or they'll die. So if to follow children with thyroid nodules, and children are so sensitive to cancer, cancer spread really fast in children because their cells are so actively dividing, is wicked. And that's classical of what the Japanese government is doing. It's not testing the food routinely. Children are living in very, very high radiation areas, and they're just passing Geiger counters over the children's thyroids to pick up the gamma. But that doesn't pick up the beta. And what, the only way to find out what is in the children's bodies is to put them into a whole body counter which measures the spectrum of, of gamma radiation given off by all the isotopes. And then you can say, oh, they've got cesium-137, cesium-134, radioactive iodine, there's, oh, there's some plutonium. It's the only way. And they've got hardly any whole body counters in Japan. So they're not looking at the people adequately, particularly the children. Cesium-137 is a really nasty one. Its half-life is 30 years. It's around for 600 years. It's a beta and a gamma, and it's a potassium analogue. So our cells are rich in potassium. It causes brain tumours, 
rhabdomyosarcomas. Hands up those who have ever seen a rhabdo. You have, yeah, a very, very rare, rare form of muscle sarcoma, particularly in children. Um, uh, tumours of testicles and ovaries and the like. Um, and the other one is season 134, which is even worse. Its half-life is two years. So the shorter the half-life, the more radioactive it is. And equal amounts of cesium 137 and 134 got out at, at, at um, Fukushima. Okay, this is obviously Europe. And here's the reactor at Chernobyl. And the dark patches are really areas that should be uninhabitable, but people are still living there. And you can see that it went all over Europe. And it's only cesium and 200 isotopes got out. Some last only seconds and they've decayed away to nothing. But there would be over 100 isotopes, all of which have different pathways in the body, different metabolic pathways. But this is only cesium. Um, Turkey is not on the map, but Turkey got a whopping dose of radiation, never buy Turkish food. In fact, from this map, you should never buy European food. Never buy cheese from uh, the Scandinavian countries. They got a huge dose. There are over 300 farms in Cumbria and Wales now whose lambs are so full of cesium, the government told them to shut their farms down. And they said, for how long? They said, oh, 100 years. It's not, it's 600 years. 40% of the European landmass is currently radioactive. You don't know what food you're buying from Europe, whether it's olive oil from Spain or... Spain got a fair bit and they haven't mapped Spain, nor did they map France, because the French are so darn arrogant and 80% of their electricity comes from nuclear power. They said the radiation from Chernobyl stopped at the French border. <laughs> but they're now finding a higher incidence of cancer that's developing now in France. Um, I don't buy, I mean, in Australia we don't have radioactive food. We've got great clean food. We just export uranium so everyone else can have it. Um, and I'm really careful. I rang the man in Melbourne, Australia, who tests the food from Europe, and I said, how do you test it? He said, oh, we do random spot checks. I said, well, how do you pick up the stuff to test? He said, oh, the computer picks it out. So obviously, a lot is missed. And I said, what do you do when you find radioactive food? Oh, he said, we dilute it with non-radioactive food. The solution to pollution by dilution is fallacious when it comes to radiation. Do you get it? I've already explained why, haven't I? Because of the food chain. And that applies to fish too. Then the strontium-90, which Linus Pauling, bless his soul, and Barry Comer used to talk about. It's a calcium analogue, half-life 28 days. It's around for 600 years, all over Europe. Um, and it uh, causes bone cancer, osteogenic sarcoma, multiple myeloma, leukemia, and what's the cancer of the red blood cells where you get too many red blood cells? What is it? What? No. No, come on. Too many red blood cells. Come on. You. Well, polycythemia vera. Yeah. Okay. This is a beta and a gamma. And last but least, I'll explain to you, but please remember this is only just a tiny portion representative of what escapes, plutonium. Now, Pluto is named after not the dog, but the god of hell. I first read about plutonium when I was um, a young medical student. Oh, no, a bit older, I, I learned we had a lot of uranium. We've got, so I got a book out called Poison Power by Goffman and Tamplin. Goffman worked for the AEC. And I read about plutonium. I nearly got alopecia totalis. As I was reading the book, like my hair fell out, I'd never read anything so dangerous. So let me walk you through it. It's an alpha emitter, such that 10 to the 6 grams is definitely carcinogenic, a millionth of a gram, but it's probably 10 to the minus 9 grams. When they injected it into beagle dogs, they didn't find a dose low enough that didn't give every dog cancer. All right? It is an alpha, it's got a half-life of 24,400 years, so it's around, you know, a quarter to half a million years. It's all over Europe. Um, it's an iron analogue. It's not absorbed well from the gut, but in neonatal guts it's absorbed because they're immature, and in chlorinated water it's absorbed better. But it is inhaled into the lung, and of course it, it, it lands very, down here, and because the alpha particle travels only a very short distance, um, and